the 52nd episode of Crop Books Weekly for the third week of July 2011. This episode is titled All Your Data Belong to Us. Crop Books Weekly is sponsored by Arcus, cloud computing experts. I'm your host, Jason Atwood, and joining me as a co host today for the 52nd time, feels like the 53rd, but it's really only the 52nd time, is uh, the much nominated, much talked about Octi Almost winner, Justin Edelstein. Justin, how are you? I have my hands up in victory right now. Number 52 on its way. It's a good number for us. I love it. David Harris. I think Harris. that's once a week. That's also... I think our anniversary was yesterday of our first podcast that we well, ever Well, happy done. anniversary to us. Yesterday, July 13th. Today being July 14th. Really? Yeah, I believe that is true. Huh. Well, happy anniversary. Thanks. Great happy one. Happy anniversary to you, too. What'd you get me? Uh, I got you a cloud, folks. I picked the week. I'll take it. All right. And I got you an agenda. We're going to talk about... Uh, the new blog post on, Ar- on blog.archisync.com talking about three uh, must-attend Dreamforce sessions. So we have a little DF11 news. Pa- uh, hashtag DF11. Hash DF11. Uh, audio hash. We got some Dropbox TOSs to talk about and how mm-hmm. they matter. Mm-hmm. We got some Google Docs updates and maybe how they're doing a little taken from someone else's uh, vibe here. And then we got an oldie but a goodie, something that you and I used to work on uh, a lot back in the day at the company that shall not be named, a, but a product called Yodely. I'm not even sure people know what Yodely is anymore. I, I, I have to imagine nobody really knows what Yodely is, but probably have used it. But we'll talk about that when we get to it, because we got some Yodely news. And then, of course, we'll end up with our Cloud Folks Hat Pick of the Week. I got you not one, but maybe two, depending on how good you are throughout Because you the don't want to write them down anymore for me to see. Because you go look them up immediately That's, and start playing with them well, and download them while well, we're in the podcast. isn't that the point of no. the picks? No, you're supposed to. I want your natural reaction. I want the, oh, that's interesting, versus, yeah, I just played with that five minutes well, ago. this one doesn't seem all that interesting, so I'm hoping your other one is. It is. It's much more interesting. This is actually, this isn't the one. I just put up one just, and I swapped it. This was it. Your deceptive. Yes. You're, you deceived me. I am deceiving you on the podcast in the Google Wave. Ding, did it. All right, so first thing let's talk about is the... Well, didn't we have a nice review this week? Oh, we did. I um, wanted to shout that out early. Yes, let's shout it out. Before people turn this off. <laughs> we got a great review on iTunes. Uh, again, if you're uh, if you're not listening to this on iTunes, you're missing out because it's the only place you can go and review us and give us nice reviews. Anyway, we see them and we appreciate it. So if you're, you know, a shout out... Um, to all reviewers and all that will come. Uh, we also got nominated for an Octi in the Dreamforce portal, which uh, I'm sure comes with cash and prizes. We have Apparently, we have to go to the TweetUp to see, see if we won, so we might have to send someone there to find out if we won the Octi. Well, we should probably go. Or I don't know when the TweetUp is, but we well, might we'll be busy. Might speaking be. of Dreamforce... Speaking of. Good segue. I <laughs> uh, have a new blog post talking about the... Three must attend Dreamforce 2011 sessions. Yep. So this was written by our other partner. Yes. Again, who shall remain nameless. I. This is a very well tagged article. So. Uh, I just untagged it. You untagged about a few of them. Well, you know, you don't need twelve tags for a three paragraph Why blog not? post. That's just not necessary. Anyway, so let's talk about uh, the three that he picked. Actually, let's pick one of his. Okay. And then leave the other two. Well, for let me go lead. first. Yeah, you go for it. Good, because I'm picking the set the social roadmap for your company session. Aww. You want to know why? Gary Vaynerchuk. That's why. Because let's explain. So Gary V at Gary V V E E. Yeah. Uh, author of uh, the Thank You Economy and Crush It. And that's it. Host of Wine Library TV, among other one of the first video podcasts yeah, ever, among other pod podcasts and social social media savant yes. Gary Vaynerchuk will be speaking um, during the. I don't even know what track this would be. Is a social, social track, track? I guess the the schedule's out. It's on the Dreamforce website, and rumor has it that the Agenda Builder will be released this week on Excellent. Friday. So Excellent. looking forward to that. Uh, so definitely make sure that you go to see Gary Vaynerchuk uh, talk about um, his experiences with, with social networking and how to how to set up your strategy and your roadmap for your company uh, to leverage social networking in a similar way that he's done and he's built himself up as quite the, quite the brand. So I have a rat hole for you to start off the podcast. We love rat holes. Show one of our contests because we're going to do a... a contest for Dreamforce probably will probably kick it off in the beginning of 
August. We'll leave a couple weeks for people to yeah, do the contests. contests are fun. Um, people like should contests. we have a special? Should we add into the contest how many swears that Gary V does in his session? Over under. Over under. Yeah, it should definitely be a question. So the question: Will he be? Will he be told not to swear, or do you think that's just sort of he can't? Well, tell Gary v there's a difference. You can tell Gary V not to swear, but that doesn't mean he won't swear. But it would. But if I'm putting the odds, if I'm Vegas, I need to know if he's told or not. Because if he's told or not, then I could say he's going to get the two or three. If he's not, if he's told, he's not told anything. Oh, he could get a hundred. So Depends how long he speaks. Too. It's kind of like the you know, it's like the weather in a sporting event. You have to know. Go on YouTube and look for any of his talks, and you'll yeah. see what we're talking about. Right. So I, I, that's a, that's a very good one. Um, so there's two others. In I will the, not be working the booth during that session because that's one of the sessions that I will be attending. Uh, yes. Well, we'll, we'll have as to, well as the one that I'm speaking at, which I'll talk about at some other time. Yeah, you should probably talk about that again once the session is built and all that, and then, and we have we can point people to go get it, and you know the name of it, the number of it, and all that. Yeah, I'll 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 I'll, I'll do that next week. Okay, okay, I'm sure you'll tweet it up um, at some point. So look out for his Twitter at twittercom slash Uh So go to blog.arcusync.com and read up on the rest of the two sessions. Because uh, lots coming up, Dreamforce. I think for the next couple podcasts, we're probably gonna have a little bit of Dreamforce news in each one of them. So stay tuned for more on that. Very likely. Very likely. It's almost. It's gonna take over our world soon. It's almost inevitable. It sort of already has. All right. So next story is about um, Dropbox, and uh, so a big, not a big little controversy. So if you're a big a, little controversy, yeah, big little controversy. Controversy. So Dropbox is a cloud service that allows you to um, have locally stored folders that then sync to the cloud where you can access them from the web, from obviously other machines, or from uh, devices like your Android, your, your Zoom player, uh, or your, uh, your WebOS player, just other devices. Uh, no, I, I, yes, in your iPhone and iPad, and you're looking at me like, why didn't you mention those? Because I was being well, funny. No, I, yeah, I was being funny. You're hysterical. Because uh, I always say your iPad, your iPhone, your iTouch. Uh, so it is great service. Do you use it? I do. Uh, it's nice. I don't use it as religiously as you do, though. I use it pretty religiously. I use it, I use it lightly, though. I don't use it for. Things. I use it for about fourteen documents. So I wouldn't say I'm like on a high. I used it just the other day because I was trying to get uh, around some security with somebody, and we used Dropbox to transfer to get around the security to get around security not 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 our security, but a someone who shall remain nameless is never be talked about. Right? Uh, We got around it by using Dropbox. Nice. (laughs) I've actually used it in a collaborative environment where because what you can share folders and then they show up in your Dropbox, and then it's nice because. There's sort of someone else's folder, but then the data shows up in on your thing. You can see them saying down. If you have growl, it'll sort of tell you like this has been updated. This has been updated. It's kind of neat. Anyway, and I don't think this is a big Dropbox story, but it's more of leading to a different conversation, which is that their terms of services were changed. I think last week, and basically it said all your all your data belonged to us. You know anything that we have in our system that we're syncing for you is our data. It's ours because. You know, in the legal lease or the legal world, world, and I'm not a lawyer, but I think there's a part of saying if we take the data onto our system and we're controlling it, we're backing it up, we have to have the legal right to do with it what we need to do with it. I think that's the, the basis of it. Of course, somebody reads it, because everybody reads terms of services, of course, and freaks out, and then they go back and they put a blog post and they, re- and they redid it a little bit to say, listen, it's yours, but we need to have the permission to do with it, and and the story kind of went up and hit a big thing. Everybody was talking about it, and then it went away. Um, I think this is one interesting piece, not so much for Dropbox, but for all cloud services, in that, A, how many terms of services have you, term of services have you ever read? And just to pose that with how many cloud services do you use? Meaning, have you ever read the terms of services for Salesforce? No, Dropbox, but I, well... Mobile me. I, I, have a, I have caveats to my answer. Okay. For Salesforce, at the very least, um, when I first started using Salesforce, we worked at that rather large company that we don't name. Right, and I know someone there read it. <laughs> so you're relying upon that person. I know at least more than one person read it, and I know that they had some comments on it for sure because we That's bought true. quite a few licenses, and I know that they come through that Google Apps, Gmail, I, I, Facebook. Right. Facebook's the one that right. gets a lot the of attention. The rest of them, the answer is no. Right. Then Facebook gets a lot of attention because it happens now and again that someone reads it and it and it says, you know, every photo you give to us. I think this even showed up in another story too. 
it's a, it's sort of a big issue, but a small issue. So I ask you, does it matter? Should we as consumers be paying attention to these things, or or is cloud or is this sort of you know it's all just legalese and no one ever acts on a terms of service ever? All right. So should I care? Yeah. Do I just click I agree? Yeah. So, so you care, but you don't do anything about it. Yeah. All like right. I. I, I have you seen the? You don't really watch South Park, but did you see the Human Centipede episode? Uh, I did, did not. Did you just hear about it? I've at heard the about it. It just pokes fun at how Apple gets you to agree to their terms of services of iTunes, and sort of then they take a very radical like, "Well, you agreed to this in the right. terms of service. Now we're gonna come over, and to now your we're house. gonna do all this stuff, stuff to, you. to you." South Park stuff that wouldn't be appropriate for this. Podcast. Not appropriate for this podcast right. at all, but still funny nonetheless right and talks directly at this issue of you know when you're when you're faced with i want to use this thing and now you're throwing 15 pages in small print in front of me and all i got to do is click a button to get past it i'm clicking that button yeah i i, I think it's i, I think the, the courts there's been a, i think there's been a couple court rulings because i feel like i've read them saying that when people go up against these terms of service they say they're not readable and it's not reasonable because really a lot of the laws come down to the law and then there's the application of the law. And the application of the law is, is done through a human who says, is that a reasonable thing to expect? And so a 15 page ter terms of service for you know an iTunes card that you pick up for five bucks or give to your $15 to give to your friend, you know, they go put it in this 15 page. Like, is that reasonable? And, and I don't think these things are reasonable and I also don't think they'd really hold up in a court of law. I think. You could say, I clicked it or didn't click it. Can you prove that I clicked it? When did it click? What was the terms of service? You changed it. It's always like these privacy statements that your bank sends you. Like, okay, you sent it to me in the mail and it's and it's a big, thick package. It tells me all these new privacy statements. Pri your privacy statement. How is that? Like, am I agreeing to that because it came to my mail? I don't know. I, I generally like that there are people looking at it and I think it's something you should consider, especially if you're going to put what you're putting up there. But it's always a matter of, you know, so I put some documents that I download and they go up there. Mm, okay. And if, if it's theirs, well, fine. <laughs> you can, then I'll go download it again. I don't know. But for companies, it's certainly something that I know some of our clients have really looked at and gone over pretty deeply Salesforce's, um, Salesforce's agreements and licensing terms and all that. And and they and I know Salesforce uses the hey listen if it's good enough for for Deutsche Bank if it's good enough for Citi if it's good enough for Bank of America it's good enough for you buddy, and I think that wins the argument a lot. Although you know when's the last time all those three companies read the agreement? I don't know. So moving on, um, to, moving right along to our Google Docs. So yeah. uh, why don't you take this article? Sure. And lead us down the magic it's path. It's interesting that we're talking about Google Docs and their response to. Uh, people's product ideas because we just used Google Docs together um, probably for the first time doing a document together at one time. We often use the Wave to do that um, where we write... Formerly known as Google Wave. Google Wave. Yep. To write something together and comment on each other's stuff. We actually just did this just before recording this podcast where we wrote a long document together and watched in real time each other's things. terms of service a terms of service our terms of service no, not our terms of service and for i our... actually found it a little annoying because like my cursor kept moving and like the page and then i would see your thing in purple and my thing was in green and yeah. whatever but i think it's good it, i agree and as using it i think it's good for uh reading reviewing and editing it's not good for collaborative writing yeah but i don't, I don't know if there's anything that's all that good for collaborative writing collaborative, collaborative writing's writing's tough. really hard it is tough. but it was good that we had we didn't have to merge our documents together like no. we were each writing portions of a document right. and when we were done we were done so that that was really great yeah done it's auto saved if, if the world had crashed you know no more my computer crashed and i lost totally. my homework anyway let's get to this post on the google enterprise blog uh, that was posted uh, just a couple days ago that talked about, well, I think there's two things here. One is the actual uh, the actual features that they're that they're looking at, which I think is actually the smaller news. So just going through some of the ideas that they're prioritizing, adding better header and footer functionality, making Google Docs available offline, which could be pretty big, uh, and creating vertical merge in spreadsheets. Um, great. Three features, phenomenal. I think the bigger thing here is that Google has opened up somewhat of an idea exchange, and they've had this product for a while, 
um, that they've had their I can't remember what they call it. They don't call it ideas. They call it like moderator or something like that. Right. I think this is what um, uh, someone in the last presidential election used this technology to do like an ideas platform. Was and it Obama? I think it was Obama. Yeah. I think a lot of people thought it was Salesforce, and I think it really was Google. Like me, I thought it was Salesforce. Yeah, and I think it was really. I thought Google someone in the background. someone from Salesforce told me it was Salesforce. I feel like it was Google, but okay. I could be wrong. Let us know um, if you know better. Um, <laughs> I'll just make a statement, and it's true. Uh, so I think it was interesting. You know, they let people vote for feed, or they they said give us feedback. They had um, four thousand people participate. 2,000 ideas came in, 50,000 votes. So people are definitely uh, into Google Docs and Google Apps and making it better. And um, in my mind, it's it's getting there. It's really getting to the point where it's like a full-on, I don't open Microsoft Word anymore unless someone sends me a Word document. It's interesting. I think this is a bigger conversation about this because you know we're big Salesforce users, blah, blah, blah. Uh, <laughs> read my term of service before you listen to this podcast. But... When Salesforce Ideas first hit, and we, again, it was called Crispy News back before Salesforce, and they bought it, and I remember looking at it, I think this is great. Since then, you know, it's been years now, four or five years, something like that. It's been a while. It's been about four or five years. Yeah. It's been four or five years. Um, you know, I've now watched hundreds of competitors show up, from little PHP scripts that people write and put out for free, to this, to other ones. Uh, and interesting that the, the concept is no longer as fresh as it was. The concept, and we used to be back talking about this to a lot of people, look, it's this platform and you can vote on ideas. It's and a virtual, what do we call it? Like a, a um, we called it not a suggestion. We, we were like, oh, it's like the new suggestion box 2.0. It's, it's a lot like a, um, what are those groups like where they get, like if I'm launching a new product, I get a bunch of people together and focus groups. Focus groups. It's like an online focus group right. for the masses. And and I, I don't know, but I have a my gut feeling is that that Salesforce you know kind of moved this out and they they built it for Starbucks, they built it for Dell, and you know they were kind of pushing this forward. This is one of the things that I've looked back on and go, has it moved forward since then, or is it just this idea that it can go as about as far as it can go? That's my reference to Oklahoma, and that there's nothing really more to do with it. Um, you know, it is what it is. People vote. They like it. They have votes. They have up-down votes. They can, they take their ideas. I mean, they certainly eat their own dog food. They they go in and they use well, it. And their community is certainly the most vibrant of ideas communities, I have to imagine. I think Dell's is pretty big. I think Dell's is really, really yeah. big. Dell has more users, you know, sort of right. millions of users out there. Um, and I love it from a concept. Uh, and I use it, but I just wonder now, like, is is it still as relevant as it was? And are other platforms like the social platforms? You know, I think someone released a product in uh, on Twitter that was like a Twitter voting system that you could, I guess, you'd set up some sort of vote, and then they would tweet back, and they tweet back a hashtag towards the vote, one or the other, and then it would count the votes. You know, you wonder, and then Facebook has sort of stuff now, and where people are is a website where people go and log in and click plus one or plus 10, is it as relevant now with the social networking and four years ago, where was Facebook? I don't know, I, f I feel like it's lost some of its its relevency because of because of the social networking. I think you're probably right. right. Well, then I like being right. So, uh, interesting, um, and good things to come up with Google Docs. Again, I find I use it more and more, and I'm enjoying it more and more. Um, we're using it with clients more and more. You know, if they're into Google Docs, if they have it, then it's nice to be able to share stuff with them. Um, I'm always surprised when things work, <laughs> in fact. And I'm like, ooh, that feature's there. Like, I was turning on and off the headers as we were writing this document. I right. didn't need to see our logo 10 times over. It just worked. And I just didn't know what your experience was. Did you see it going on and off as I turned it off? Did no, I didn't even notice. I was in a zone. I was writing. You were writing. Okay. Uh, so the last story before we get to our Cloud Focus app pick of the week which will definitely win us an Octi, <laughs> is, uh, I think, an interesting one. It's pretty much a press release, which is that Yodely, a aggregation service that has been around for, it's probably in the press release, but I would say 15 years? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it out there just as a guess. Yodely been out for how long? Like, Yodely 90, has existed. 99. 99. That's close. Yeah. Um, and was really one of the big first aggregators of data. And they had a system that they didn't so much do to the public, 
Um, they've now hit 30 million users, that's the story, but let's go back to where I think it's interesting, is that we used to work on it in that big company, and what, what they would generally do is white label it for those big companies, banks, uh, and that you would log into your bank website, and then there'd be the service, sometimes very well integrated, sometimes not so much, and you'd click on it, um, like the current Bank of America service is called My Portfolio. You click on it and it just kind of does it. It doesn't really, it doesn't tell you it's yodely, but I know it is. And it goes out and you basically give it a bunch of username and passwords to all your other sites. And it goes out and collects all the data and brings it back and gives you views and, and aggregation and does all sorts of neat stuff like um, can tell you things and give you alerts. Um, interesting that Yodely is still is still relevant as a, a white label, but but other things like Mint have become sort of to the public side much more. You know, they use things like Mint. I, my wife uses Mint. You use Mint. You probably don't use it very regularly, but you use it. Do you? No, everything's hooked up to it. I don't like, go to it. I just know things flow through it. Right, but you can put your budget. They can send you alerts. There's, a, there's an iPhone app that'll that say stuff. you spent more than twenty two dollars on fast food this month. It's interesting, and it's now owned by Intuit, the makers of Quicken, so it's kind of, they had their own product, but they decided to go with Mint. Um, but interesting, just the, the, this is a big idea that we used to really think was going to take off, you know, this aggregation services and all this, and, and they were making major headways into all these financial services. I think probably the financial services market crumbling hurt a little bit, but your thoughts on sort of Yodely and where they are now, are they relevant, you know? They're not relevant to me anymore, because I don't work in that industry and that in that um, capacity. I mean, we used to work on the website, so it was like a big thing, you know. I had a financial services, you got your portfolio, and a big thing was sort of, how do we get your entire view of your portfolio into, you know, seeing it from this angle, and that was a thing that you really did a really good job of, right? You can attach all your other accounts, put it in your house, or your yep. car, or they even whatever have, else. They'll go out now and they'll go to uh, Zillow and they'll get your Z, Z estimate, so they'll keep an ongoing track of your property and tell you what the value that is. Uh, they do, uh, the one I really like is they do rewards points aggregation, so they'll show you all your rewards points in like American Express or City Gold or whatever. Still relevant in terms of being integrated into websites like a Bank of America or, you know, in this article they talk about Fidelity and Amex and, and others where we've seen it. Um, in that in that sense, still relevant as a consumer product, I don't think anyone's going to Yodely. They're likely, more likely to go to Mint or even something else. Yeah, there's another one I was looking at the other day. I, I have for a long time, and I tweeted this the other day, I'm not going to make it my app pick of the week, but I was... I was looking at, as a lot of Quicken users out there know, if you're a Mac Quicken user, you've been left in the dust, and it won't be supported. The, two, the last version that was any good or worthwhile or worth even a penny was 2007, and it won't be supported under Lion. So I went on a mission, because I go on once a year, to say, can I replace Quicken? Quicken's something I've been using since 95, so even before Yodel existed, and it tracks all my stuff in it, and it's like, I, at this point, I don't know if I could do without Quicken. So I went and looked, and there's another one, I forgot the name, it's like Rumbla or Rumbla or something, and it does something close to Mint, and I was looking at them going, okay, well, that's kind of interesting. At the end of the day, I went back, I downloaded the new version because they had a deep, deep discount of Quicken Essentials, which is their new platform, and it's, while it doesn't do everything for everybody, it does enough for me, so I'm, I'm good for another couple of years until I decide to move off. But the thing that these aggregation services never do is they don't really look towards the future. So they don't, they'll say... Uh, this happened because always looking at your account, right? So they go, oh, I look at your Chase account. And you spent three ninety five uh, for a latte at, at at Starbucks, and then they can do the analysis to say you're spending a lot at lattes at Starbucks, and here's your budget for lattes at Starbucks, and you you they do it month to month, which is great. That's good stuff. What they don't do is look at it and say, we know you always spend three hundred ninety five dollars a month on your cable bill. That'd be a high cable bill, but it, and and here it is upcoming. Like we. You know, get ready for this bill to come, which is a lot of these offline systems do. Like Quicken Essentials looks and says, "Here's all these bills I think are coming up, so you better be re ready for them." Here's your State Farm that's coming up. Here's your, you know, maintenance payment, your mortgage payment, because I see that you're doing them a lot or every month the same amount. So I'm gonna basically put it in your view as this is a coming up payment, and then you can just sort of mark it as paid. 
um, when you pay it. So, interesting stuff. I mean, I I don't know. Yodoli, we used to meet with them. One of my favorite jackets of all time, I got his swag from Yodoli. Loved that jacket for so long. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm fascinated because it's, I wouldn't say it's one of the first cloud services, but in a lot of ways, it kind of was. It was like this aggregation service in the internet, pulled all your data together, you know, it had all those kind of pieces. I don't think they were virtualized, because um, I know you could be on different versions of Yodoli. Um, but anyway, interesting interesting stuff for Yodoli. Even more interesting stuff is your and my Cloud Folks app pick of the week. So let's get to it. As you know, if, if you the first time listening to this podcast, because we just won the Octi, and you're going you back. Win any Octis. It, no, I'm saying, if, you, if we just won the Octi, and you're now going back and listening to every episode we ever did. Oh, God. <laughs> And you started on 52, because you think that's a good number. It's David Harris's number. For Cloud Focus, uh, the app pick of the week, we pick one app or two a week, and we talk about them. Usually and you try and squeeze more than one. In I there. think I'm going to do that this week. So let's go. What's yours? So pathetic. Um, I'm picking a browser. Okay, so that's something I've done about three times now. Yeah, but I'm picking, I'm picking a mobile browser. Okay. I'm picking a browser called Puffin web browser. Mm -hmm. P-U-F-F-I-N. Like the bird. Like the bird. That's actually their logo. And I'm going to recommend it for the iPad, but I'm not going to recommend it for the iPhone. Okay. It, it works on both. So it's, it's universal. Your, it's your cloud focus app pick and unpick of the week. Well, I have it on both and I feel like it works really well on the iPad and I feel like it's not anything special on the iPhone. As a matter of fact, I don't think it works very well on the iPhone. Um... What does it do great? Well, it plays Flash. So it does that. Flash is supported in your Puffin web browser on your iPad. How is it doing it? Is it doing it by actually like emulating? I have no it? idea. Okay. Thank you for asking. Uh, because I, I know a lot no of these idea. browsers have done a way of like they go and they know, they, they basically cache it somewhere and convert it for you into non-Flash. Um, does it play video, flash video flash games? Flash videos does videos. not do games. Okay, so I think it's caching it somewhere and converting it and then sending it. I don't it. care. Okay. I'm a dumb user and I can see flash websites. Awesome. All right. It also has tabs, which is pretty nice. Which is coming in. Which the new Safari will have. Yes. It's basically as fast as Safari. Mm -hmm. uh, very clean interface. Plays flash. Thought it was interesting. How much is it? 99 cents. Does it work with Salesforce? I didn't log into Salesforce on my the iPad. The thorough testing that. of this new product that you're Why do I need to log into Salesforce? All I, I did was go to some websites that were Flash and it worked, and then I saw some videos, it worked. I was like, oh, this works. All right. Good. Great. Got your class I, You know what I'm going to do right now? I'm going to pull out my iPad while you're going through your two. Yeah. I'm going to log into a Salesforce. I'm puffing, and I'm going to see how Salesforce content works. Excellent. That would be nice. Right, because Salesforce content uses Flash, and that would be something that we would all be interested in. All the listeners, in order to win that Octi, it would be nice if you had all the information. All right, so I have two picks. So wait, Puffin Web Browser, available for iTunes, uh, iPhone, iPad, 99 cents, Universal, which we were discussing before how we Yeah, it's Universal, which is... The only way know, to go. The only way to go. Do not I, put out I apps that are these apps universal. that are, like, make me buy it, for the iPad and then tell me I can seamlessly use it on my iPhone to get back to the same game <coughs> Scrabble and not just give me both versions uh, okay so I'm going to pick two things one I have the reason I'm going to pick uh, my first pick and then my second pick one of I've actually bought and used and I think it's so I can talk about it the other one is I've seen I haven't had a chance to use it because of a certain reason and we'll talk about that so the first, my real pick of the week is actually a iPad app gone OS X. So it's Reader, and I don't think I picked it as an iPad app, but it's Reader for, for OS X, for, for the Mac. Um, it is an app that basically pulls in all your RSS feeds and can read from, the big one is it can read from Google Reader, and that's why it's R-E-E-D-E-R, -E -E I'm sure, to stay away from other licensees. Um, but it's what it's got is it's got this really nice, quick, easy interface. It kind of pulls, you know, as we talked about the other day, how we, we like apps on the iPad because they have this interface. 
Well, this app on the Mac has a nice interface. It has unreads and reds and just easy to not move around and to navigate. It has a built-in browser, so you can kind of just stay right in with the thing. You can tweet from it. It kind of does all that stuff built in. Um, and again, if you know the iPad app version of Reader, again, R-E-E-D-E-R, which I also own, um, then this one is for you. And price-wise, for, for an OS X app, $9.99, Okay, I think that's, it feels like iPad pricing, but since it's already an iPad app, I don't know, I feel like it's a little high. I would have done five ninety nine or something, but Reader by, it's actually by a person, Silvio Rizzi. Um, and the nice thing about it is you can just see how it's gonna become a really great Lion app where it'll have, where you can swipe. You sit there and swipe left to right on it or something like that. So that's my first pick, that's Reader. Um, and the other one is, Again, I, I can't really pick this until it could be news, but it wasn't cloudy enough to be news, and it wasn't a pick enough to be a pick, and I haven't used it yet. It's uh, called Crowd Seats. You heard of this? No. It's Groupon for sports tickets. Isn't that like StubHub? No, it's more like they go out. Well, StubHub doesn't go out to try to find you specials and send it to you. StubHub will, if you want something, you go to it. This is sort of the crowdsourcing of buying things. It's called crowd seats. Um, and again, I haven't had a chance um, to use it yet because I'm a big sports, I'm a big football fan, and football, as of right now, won't exist in 2011, but we're all, we're, we're all very hopeful. Um, so I haven't used it, but I love the concept. I love the concept that instead of getting from Groupon my daily, ooh, there's a spa around you that you can get a $2 facial, I, I'll get a hey, there's some games going on around you that there's only so many, you know, there's this soccer match that we have a special for that you can buy the tickets now, or there's a special on Jets tickets this weekend, or something like that. And they, I want that. How do I go to it? Exactly. See, I thought you'd like How do I get there? Uh, crowdseats.com would probably be the way to go. Um, yep, crowdseats.com. I'm going there right now. Yep. So, anyway, interesting. I was going to use Puffin on my iPad, but I already put it away. It does work with Salesforce very well, by the way. And with the con with the content. Content nice. renders. Nice. So then it must be doing something. She's doing something on super, the fly. Super special. Super special. Tickets to your uh, tickets to your favorite sporting event at fifty to ninety percent off face value. Anyway, I don't really know anything more about it than it sounds very cool. I think everybody should take a look at it if you're a sporting thing. And I also kind of like their logo because it's a shield. It reminds me of another logo. Um, I'm definitely not on the right website that crowd seats how did they spell seats s-e-a-t-s <laughs> dot -E com that's where I went hmm. oh maybe I spelled crowd wrong <laughs> wow this is this is going to go down the history this of one of the not best good. podcasts ever not good I just spoke crowd with three x's no I uh, whatever okay. oh this is a cool logo yeah it reminds you of something doesn't it it does a little bit um so anyway do I need to put my email address in here you gotta do they're something. just gonna like so think of it as Groupon or Lifebook or Facebook. No. Yes, okay. you can. They're right there at the bottom. There's a little link. No, it right. doesn't let me log in that way. Alrighty. So before we lose everybody who listens to you, try to log into a website. Um, that's it. Those are my two picks. So as always, if you want to read the blog post or see any other article, uh, podca um, podcast. Uh, someone actually tweeted the other day that they were on a big road trip and they were listening from episode 45 through 49. Wow. I was like, that's great. I'm glad you're listening. Um, but anyway, they're all up on the on the blog. So blog.arcusinc.com. Uh, it's A-R-K-U-S-I-N-C.com. Uh, all the podcasts and all the um, all the blog posts. A year's worth of blog posts, too, I think. So lots of information up there. If you want to follow the company where we post a lot of this stuff is twitter.com slash arcus inc a-r-k-u-s i-n-c i'm at twitter.com slash jason m atwood and justin here is at twitter.com at just edelstein uh facebook again if you're a facebook person we don't have our google plus page yet because we've been told by google not to have one but if you're on facebook uh we're in facebook facebook.com slash arcus inc and you can follow and like us there and again as we post a blog post or a podcast you'll see it in your feed so you just another place to know that it happens but the best place that we think to you to follow this podcast, other than the Zoom Marketplace, is iTunes because you can you can go in there and you can um, you can subscribe to it, leave us a review. That'd be great. 
Uh, and then every week, whenever we publish it, because sometimes we change it up. Today we're doing like kind of an earlier Thursday. Sometimes we do a later Friday or something. Um, you'll get it almost 30 to 40 seconds or 30 minutes after we post post it because it's got to go out through the content delivery network. And that's in iTunes. Just type in Cloud Focus Weekly and hit subscribe. And that's it. And that is all we have for this week in the Cloud Focus Podcast. As always, have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. Um, and hopefully, if you're heading to Dreamforce, remember, we are going to be there. Arcus is going to be there. We're, I think, officially in booth 30. If we change our minds, we'll, taint, we'll tell you, but we're in booth. So write that down and hope to see you there. We will be doing a, pod, we will be doing a contest coming up about the podcast. So you want to listen in for the next three or four episodes. There will be giveaways. There will be stuff to, to get. Um, but until then, until Dreamforce, I guess, huh? enjoy those cloudy days.